States alone since 2008 has done a better part of four trillion dollars in food, sorry, in quantitative easing uh, since 2008. And that's a huge amount. Right now, the Japanese are pledged to double their money stock, basically, by the end of next year. Again, quite a massive inflow of liquidity into the global financial system. But why was all that necessary? Basically because the global economy slowed down and didn't recover quickly enough. Um, 2007, subprime. So here we are, 2013, five, six years down the line from when subprime first raised its head, and we are basically still dealing with that. Now, and, and to that extent, what were the first major trend that having uh, implications for us, we'll deal with the implications later, is simply the slowing down of the global economy. The advanced economies have slowed from just under 2.5% to just under half a percent of growth annually on average. So you see just how bad that is. For the emerging economies, we've slowed from figures that touched double digits into kind of like five and a half, six percent. So even though emerging economies are still growing rather, we now see a robust, but their robust is a very relative term. But the key thing is everybody has slowed down in terms of growth. So that's the first major trend. For Nigeria, the immediate impact of that trend was still is commodity prices. Yeah, I know there's a lot of noise about shale oil um, and how that will affect Nigeria. But maybe because I've seen too many numbers, I'm one of those who says, I'll wait a bit to form my own judgment on that. If you go read the um, EIA, um, their latest review of shale oil, there are 42 countries that potentially have shale oil and gas. Most of them don't have the technology or the capacity to exploit it. Um, and the 700 page report on the EIA's website, so it was interesting. But added to that, if you look, if you go to Shell's website, they have an output for energy up to 2030. And one of, for me, one of the missing bits of the analysis that very few people talk about is the demand side. We talk about the supply side. On the demand side, we expect to see between now and 2030, 1.2 billion additional energy hungry human beings on Earth. So there is still, uh, for me, I think the jury is still out as to whether Niger how Nigeria will, Nigeria will be impacted, how it will be impacted, is what will happen. We're still the third largest exchange in Africa by market cap, okay? Um, South Africa and Casablanca are ahead of us. Still, quote, approximately 5 million investors. That number has not changed since the day I joined the stock exchange, and that was in 2009. Um, and that's reflective of what the market really has penalized us for doing or allowing to happen in 2008. There you have it. Um, the numbers have changed a little bit in terms of um, local versus foreign participation, as uh, Mr. Doherty said. It was as high as 76% last year. We have seen a retraction by the foreigns. It hasn't been so recent as might have been alluded to. It's actually been happening since Q3 of last year. And so now we're seeing a lot more local investment. I presume it's all institutional because I don't think the retail investors have quite forgiven us or have quite for, for recovered from what happened in 2008. In 2009, 11 companies were delisted because of non-compliance with regulatory, um, with the rules. In 2010, two companies. In 2011, 21 companies were delisted, 14 of them for regulatory infractions. And in 2012, that number is now down to three. This year alone, we've delisted two companies um, because of mergers. Um, we've got two in the pipeline to be delisted for non-compliance with regulatory um, environments, okay? We're cleaning up the market. Um, 
combination of bad advice, free money, uh, herd mentality, chasing high returns in a short period of time, all those things that led to the bubble, to the crash. Where we're recovering to, um, it's okay. I, I think the growth, the recovery has been decent. Um, I think given all the stops we put in the market, the regulation, um, cleaning up the market in terms of not so good companies listed on the market, I think we're doing pretty well. We're kind of setting up a framework for the market to actually grow the way it should grow. Okay? This chart essentially um, shows from the period of from the period from 2001, that's 2001 to 2011, um, compares inflation, GDP, and the NSC index over that period. In other words, if you went back to 2001, and the red line would represent the trend of inflation over that period, the green line would be growing at inflation plus the growth rate of GDP. Okay? And the blue line would be Nigerian Stock Exchange Index. And you'll find that um, if you did this, this stops, this stops in mid-2001. At that point, you will see that there was a, quite a dramatic difference between where you were in the index and where inflation was and where GDP. In other words, this had underperformed both inflation and GDP as of mid-2011. Well, um, Investment One has been in existence for five years. Initially as the asset investment management um, subsidiary of GT Bank, we were at that time called um, GTB Asset Management. But following CBN's reform um, agenda in 2010-11, we divested, or GTB divested from GTB Asset Management and we, we branded ourselves as Investment One. We have been doing four things, asset management, securities brokerage, trusteeship and financial advice we issue in our work. Since GTB has left, we have continued to do that, but we've also been able to expand in, into other areas of um, um, asset management, so we have gone from just managing non-pension assets into managing pension assets. We've done this by acquiring the pensions business. We've also acquired management rights for the Nigerian International Growth Fund, um, previously managed by Fidelity Bank. And just recently, subject to regulatory approval, we've, um, we have a right to acquire Kakawa Asset Management. So this has seen a tremendous growth in our funds under management, our asset management business. We've also been successful in terms of our securities brokerage business, um, in terms of being top 10 in the league table in 2012. Among the three designated appointments done by the exchange supplementary money market maker, um, supplementary equity um, market maker, the uh, fixed income market makers, as well as what's called designated advisor, we, we got all the, um, the appointments from the NSC. So Investment One is trying to move from just being um, an asset management firm to becoming a, um, a wide-scale financial services company, providing a range of services from asset management, issuing us financial advisory, securities brokerage, trusteeship, registrar services business. We own a registrar business and we own a pensions business. The only areas we have not played in and we have deliberately said we are staying out of this is insurance and, and banking can safely tell you that the stock exchange has been very focused on the regulatory environment for the capital market. Part of the issues that we experienced in 2008 was a lack of oversight of the market. And since the change in management at the stock exchange, it has been number one on our list to make sure that we're operating a fair and an orderly market orderly being the key word there, but as well as fair.